think we all breathe the collective sigh of relief when Stephen Young's character walks out with a red hat on, and it wasn't that red hat. Huh? Ooh, phew. <laughs> How's it going guys? Welcome back to my channel and time for another episode of Luke's Reviews and on today's video I am very lucky to have been able to attend my very first film festival, albeit a virtual one, but uh, I got some, some screeners for some films at the Glasgow Film Festival, one of which is a potential up-and-coming awards contender that could entirely change the landscape as we near the awards themselves, and that is Minari. Minari follows the story of a Korean family living in the 80s as they move to a new home in Arkansas, USA. There, the father, played by Stephen Young, endeavours to transform the land he now owns into a farm. Meanwhile, the family also have to contend with their youngest child, having a particular heart defect, and the arrival of their straight-talking grandmother with no filter. One of my favourite things, as both a critic and just a general lover of film, really, is when you can tell that a filmmaker has poured every ounce of their heart and soul onto the screen. And for Lee Isaac Chung's newest movie, Minari, that is undeniably the case. The story he weaves can be resonant for anyone who watches it. Uh, for parents, you can connect with that urge to ensure that you are providing your family with the best life possible. And even for some younger audience members, perhaps late teens, early 20s, it's simply just a heartwarming tale about family and ambition. Chung's screenplay is definitely driven by the notion of the American dream, with Stephen Young's character Jacob being the integral reasoning behind it. His drive and his determination to give them the life that he wants them all to so desperately have, it's so grounded, it's human. And Chung's direction feels very intimate, almost as if you are a fly on the wall watching a real family live their lives. Pair that with some beautifully understated cinematography and a terrific score, and I can absolutely see why so many people are fawning over this film. What's also quite refreshing is that there isn't any moments where it gets all showy, as if the film is gunning for any sense of emotional manipulation, or it's acting up hoping that the Academy will notice. Yun in particular is sensational. His character was perhaps the easiest to relate to, or at least in my perspective, as a man seeking reassurance and validation that he is doing the right thing. His wife, played brilliantly by Yeri Han, is left to pick up the pieces and do her best to keep the family together, even if Jacob seems stuck on pursuing this dream. For me, the real scene stealers are Alan Kim and Ye Jong Yun. Kim plays the youngest child, and he has such a charm and a wonderful screen presence about him, especially when alongside the grandmother, played by Yun. She has some of the best lines in the entire film, and that's the other thing too. It's really funny, like, far funnier than I had expected it to be, but there are some lines in this film, there are some scenes as well, that had me really, like, laughing from my belly. But the relationship that blossoms between David and his grandmother it's so sweet, it's so tender, you can't help but melt when you watch their scenes. Now it is a slow movie, and I think that for some people it is going to bore the pants off of them. And I have to be honest, truth be told, there were a couple of occasions where I did find the film really slow. There's nothing I would cut per se, but... I do think that just a sprinkle of energy here or there, it wouldn't have gone amiss. Nevertheless, Minari was a real delightful movie to watch. Chung has emerged as a filmmaker and storyteller I will be keeping a very close eye on. Everything from the cinematography, the score and the performances are so well realised that at points 
you almost forget you're watching a movie. Like, I can't necessarily say that it's a film I'm going to be rushing to watch again, but it did connect with me in an inspiring and unexpected way. So overall, I'm going to give Minari a 7.5 out of 10. Anyway, guys, those were my thoughts on Minari. Let me know, have you had a chance to see the film yet? I know it's come out in some some countries, some yet to be released. I think in terms of its UK release, I'm not entirely sure. Uh, it was scheduled for some time in March, but with the, the recent developments, now cinemas won't be opening until May. So... I'm not entirely sure if this will get some sort of an online release. Perhaps a, a streaming service may pick it up. That's entirely possible. But nevertheless, drop your thoughts down in the comments below. And my question to you, I want to know, what is your favourite movie about the American dream? I'm going to be having a couple more reviews coming your way uh, over the next few days, two of which will be related to the Glasgow Film Festival. That is the Mauritanian... I I'm not entirely sure how I pronounce that. I will look it up, though. And Ori Plaza's Black Bear. So if you aren't already, click that subscribe button, stay up to date, and I will see you in the next video. Hello. Thank you so much for watching. I hope you enjoyed the video. If you have, make sure to click that like button. And if you aren't already, click that subscribe button, too.